Johnson. Johnson. Stay here. <laughs> Melton. Here. Palermo. Here. Rowe. Here. Bagley. Here. Harding. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remarks by Councilmember Juanita Johnson. All right. Hello, everyone, and I'm encouraging everyone to join in on the festivities for Juneteenth this weekend. Uh, Malcolm X uh, will be having a celebratory um, uh, festive event, and you guys are all welcome to come. Thank you. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east walls at legislative chambers. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this city council meeting. Thank you for joining us today. As a courtesy to those in attendance, please turn off your cell phones or turn them to silent. Madam Clerk. Item six, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for MUD acres two with a waiver to section 5384D lot frontage located northeast of Blair High Road and Potter Street Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote today on number six is, is today. Are there the applicant here? Please come forward. And your name and address for the record. Hi. Kyle Crouch, 2401 North 173rd Street. Yeah, um, only items from, from the client um, on the, the conditions were was number 16, which is construct a 10 foot wide concrete trail on the west side of the creek and coordinate the design with Omaha Public um, Parks Department. So we've discussed this internally. We've discussed it with the Parks Department, discussed it with the Planning Department. The only thing kind of not mentioned in this and the client just wanted clarity that there will be a timing constraint or uh, component to building that trail of connectivity either north or south of their property, which would be similar to the adjacent Plaza 133 condition on their um, trail as well, either connectivity from the north or south. So the client just wants to make sure that that's clear, that's their understanding of when they have to build that trail. That's, okay. one, that's the only item for me. Great, thank you. Well, I'll take proponents on number six. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing's closed. Roll call. Johnson. Um, Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item six is approved, seven to zero. Items seven through 10 can be considered together for Anchor View, located at 17550 Potter Street, Planning Board and Planning Department, recommend approval. Items seven and eight are ordinances to rezone this property from AG District to DR District and R5 District. Item nine, a resolution to approve the final plat. Item 10, a resolution to approve the subdivision agreement. Public hearing and vote on items seven through 10 are today. Proponents, please, Mr. Jobin. Yes, Mr. President, members of the council, Larry Jobin, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant and the uh, developer and the development for that matter. This is a 132 lot single family subdivision, which is um, on the north and, and west side of the existing development called Anchor Point. Anchor points off of 168th and Ida on the northwest corner. Um, pretty straightforward um, subdivision deal. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents here today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Roll call. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. <laughs> Item 11, a resolution to approve the Blackstone East mixed use building tax increment financing redevelopment project plan located at 3719 Farnham Street and 3710 Harney Street in an amount up to $6,235,000. Public hearing and vote on number 11 is today. Uh, app the applicant, please, Mr. Seaton. Uh, yes, Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning Department. 
Uh, this project's in the Blackstone District. We have uh, Farm Street here. It's a pair of lots. One's a surface parking lot. The other has an older apartment building. Uh, the site will be cleared for a new nine-story development. Got a couple of renderings. Um, there'll be 20,000 square feet of first floor retail and about 161 apartment units. Um, the, <clears throat> excuse me, project also includes a public parking garage. It's not part of the TIF project. It will be developed um, in coordination with the city. Uh, be public parking structure. Um, the entire building will be subdivided as a condominium and the public parking garage will be sold to the city. Developer Blackstone Parking LLC, variety of developers, investors, managed primarily by um, Tom McClay, Matt Dwyer, Jay Lund. This is about a $43.5 million project. They're asking for $6,235,000 in TIF support. Provide some badly needed parking in the uh, Blackstone District as well. Project complies with the master plan and we ask for your approval. Thank you. Are there any other proponents today? Mr. Chairman, Troy Anderson, uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, uh, Omaha Mayor's Office here to answer any questions you may have. Great. Thank you. Any other proponents on number 11? Any opponents? Come on down. <clears throat> Larry Storr, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha, 68132. I have an addition to last week. Today I'm filing a formal protest and it is in relation to tax increment financing and item number 11. Also further on in the agenda 48, 47 and 48. Lack of transparency. I think the mayor said last week something about truth to build public confidence. I don't think the citizens are getting enough explanation of the different forms of tax increment financing. We shouldn't have to go to Lincoln to get answers. Can we not have a discussion of that in this body? I'd like to know for one. Now in the morning, the, the testifier can ask questions. In the afternoon, apparently you cannot. But why does this one indicate authorizes a city's participation, but it doesn't say what you mean by the city's participation. Most citizens like me, and there's quite a few of them, if you go to the online version of the World Herald, are rather upset with all this because their taxes are going way up. We feel that the property taxes in question at today's values versus 20 years from now are not just the developer's taxes, but the property owners in the area. Is there any truth to that? If not, please explain it. Uh, and the ad valorem taxes, uh, that's in relation to the current value, but what about the future value? And the participant, excuse me, is a, a developer, contributes only 1% of this, uh, one tenth of a percent of this, but donates that to loan proceeds? Excuse me, can I come here for a, a mortgage loan? And can I get those benefits? Or do I have to wait to be declared, uh, what do you call it? Um, extremely blighted? I can see from the map that you're getting close to my house right now, probably for an apartment building. So anyway, a lot of that is in my formal protest uh, complaint. I don't intend to file a suit, but uh, I may be driven to it one of these days if we don't get a little more upfront explanation of these matters and how it affects us or doesn't affect us, what the truth is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents today on number 11? See none, public hearings close. Mr. Harding. Don, if I could have you come back up. 
Uh, we talked a little bit about this at pre-council, and I, I, I know you explained it um, a little bit more in detail today, but I just wanted to make sure that people were clear how the condominium regime was working as it relates to the, the parking garage. So if you if you wouldn't mind, just highlight that again. Please. Yes, um, the building will be condominiumized. That means that it'd be like subdividing land, only it's building space, and the city will be the owner of the uh, condominium unit, non-residential unit, the, the parking structure. The finances of constructing the parking structure and the proceeds of selling it to the city both have been excluded from the TIF plan. And then if, if you could, and I know Council Member Melton brought this up at pre-council as well today to talk about maybe the enterprise fund uh, that, that parking sits in, or the, the I mean, enterprise uh, fund that we use for parking. I for the enterprise fund, park. I'll probably defer to Troy. Okay. Before I do, though, I would like to say that this project is putting $550,000 into public improvements around it, mm -hmm. and they're also contributing 62000 to the uh, Midtown Public Improvement Fund. So there's a substantial amount of public improvements going on outside of the public parking garage. Which TIF proceeds are? With TIF proceeds. Right. Okay. And again, the TIF money is not city money. It's money that would not exist if the project did not exist. Right. Thank you. Troy, do you uh, Can you rephrase the question? No, I, I just, um, I guess I was talking about with the enterprise fund and, and the, how the, how the garage would be paid for, essentially. Sure. So, um, so the parking enterprise fund is what we'll call a backstop for uh, acquisition of the parking garage. The negotiations we've had with the developer thus far is that the developer will build the garage as part of the project. There are cost savings associated with that. And at the project completion, as Don had indicated, the property will be subdivided in a condominium form and the city will acquire the public parking garage. <laughs> We have any number of uh, financing mechanisms to acquire that, at least purchase bonds or otherwise. Um, but traditionally, we use the Parking Enterprise Fund to backstop those bonds and those debt service obligations as part of the, as part of the Parking Enterprise Fund. That way, we know that uh, the revenue that is received from parking, whether that be on-street metered parking or garage revenue, is going back to actually continue to further parking demand response in the urban core. Uh, so that's how we backstop the debt service obligations for the parking garages. Um, but it may be some other form of lease purchase bond or otherwise, but it's the debt service associated with that. Yeah. And you, you brought up something that I think is very important that the taxpayers should understand too, is that because we're doing this in partnership with the developer and because you mentioned those cost savings, associated with having the developer, um, rather than having two separate entities, one build the garage, one build the, the mixed-use development, uh, and, and realizing that there are some cost savings in that. And then truly, we talk a lot about densification and infill, with using these different components, these different you know housing, commercial, um, and, and the, the, the civic use too, if you will, for, for the parking. To have that um, that densification, that infill in this area, I think is is something that we need to see a lot more of. And I think using uh, TIF is is a perfect example of, of why this works here. Absolutely, uh, we've seen a lot of success in the Blackstone District over the years, um, and there's a lot of pent up demand for a, a response to parking, and that's where we feel the city. Uh, can leverage our, our assets and our um, our tools and resources mm -hmm. to help respond to some of that. And in, and in the same conversation, be able to uh, take that investment and parlay that over into other parking structures in the downtown area. Um, and so I, I will really want to give credit to Ken Smith and the parking division of the Public Works Department, Bob Stuby, our our Public Works and Parking Division has done a great job over the year of, of turning around our parking division for the city um, and really turning it into an asset that we can use to promote economic development, so. Okay, thanks, Troy. Yep. And then I, I saw Mr. McClay come in. I didn't know if 
Tom wanted to say a couple of words. I don't think he was here at the, the beginning of the, the testimony, but certainly wanted to give him that opportunity. Thank, thanks, Council uh, Harding. Uh, Tom McClay, 3814 Farnham Street uh, here in Omaha. Uh, you guys moved through the, the schedule a little more rapidly than, than usual. Uh, kudos to, to you, Mr. Festerson, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, very excited about this project. We've um, been uh, working with uh, Troy uh, for a couple of years now. I mean, this predates uh, even the, the, the pandemic. Uh, obviously, that, that changed a little bit of uh, the, the timeline for things uh, as we move forward. But I think this is an incredibly exciting project to, to, to have a missing link, if you will, to the Blackstone District uh, there on Farnham Street uh, to uh, add the public uh, uh, private partnership and the public element of the parking, I think, is is a, a, a huge um, a step to to change uh, the the way Omaha looks at some of these things in general. I'm uh, excited to to keep moving forward and uh, keep working with the city. And I'd, I'd echo also Ken Smith has been great working with in the parking department uh, uh, and the uh, city of Omaha parking. Uh, to really look at everything in a totality. We've talked about this a long time in the Blackstone District. That doesn't make any sense to have a parking spot that only sits, that sits empty for 18 hours a day and maybe gets used for six. Uh, to have some cross uses, I think, is really what uh, is going to drive things forward for the city. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks. I was going to call Mr. McClay out for being late, but he said some nice things, so I, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bagley. Um, in our meeting this morning, we had talked about, the, we're talking about parking now, and confirm for me, so there's 400 stalls, 200 of which will be public parking stalls, is that correct? Yeah, so it's a little over 400 stalls. I think the latest design was right around 410, 415, something like that. Um, the negotiations we've had thus far is that the tenants uh, would have the first right of refusal at 50% of those. That doesn't necessarily mean that um, that those will be reserved, just a first right of refusal. If tenants want those stalls, they can reserve those and they can pay market rates at a monthly rate for those stalls. But if for whatever reason tenants don't want those stalls, then those stalls will get freed up as part of our parking management plan uh, and can be then used for hourly users, again, at market rate. So yes, there is some negotiations for first right of refusal by tenants. Uh, for up to 50% of the parking garage. Okay, and thanks for that clarification because I, I think it's important. Uh, Councilwoman Melton had mentioned she was up there last weekend and it's, you got to take a little bit of a hike to, to get to those great restaurants. It's in the heart of my district. It, I'll, I'll commend former Councilman Jeremy did a great job of working on that for the years he was on the council and, and I think the parking issue, um, that's just a small part of it, but I, I, I really like uh, the great briefing I got this morning in, in the past couple weeks on the going forward on this project and, and how it's going to be great for Blackstone and the heart of Omaha. So thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I have one question for you too, Mr. Anderson, if you had uh, one more moment here. Um, I believe it was Mr. Bagley who asked the question this morning, although it's unrelated to this project specifically, it is related to the area and, and is an, an item of concern which is the pedestrian issues we have here and, um, and we're on display recently with a recent incident uh, on Farm Street there. Um, and we talked about that this morning, just wanted to give you a chance to talk about where that stands and the committee you've talked with and the business improvement district you're working with on that. Yeah, so as mentioned earlier today, uh, in fact, we met as early as last week, um, city staff, public works department, um, and the BID, aware of the issues with um, pedestrian traffic in the area. Uh, and so we continue to evaluate that. We're gonna continue to work with the BID, continue to evaluate what opportunities and options exist out there to respond to both the pedestrian traffic needs, but also the vehicular traffic needs. We, we don't wanna isolate any one group um, there, but we are certainly following up from that meeting last week with uh, exploring what opportunities exist including vehicle and pedestrian counts, right? Correct, yes. Yeah. Great, thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to accept. Second. Roll call. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 11 is approved, seven to zero. 
Item 12, to consider a Class C liquor license application for wall-to-wall -wall wine and spirits located at 12977 West Center Road. Public hearing on vote on number 12 is today. I believe we have Brendan Pusick from, uh, on, on Zoom. Let's try and dial him up here. Now. Oh, are you here? Okay, yes. great. <laughs> Your yes, book. it'll be me. Hi, how are you? Good. My name is Jenny Ward. My address is 16905 Emma Line Street, Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm here on behalf of hy -Vee. Um I'm a district vice president with them, and so I'm here for the Class C liquor license. We will be um, building a new store format called Wall to Wall. It will be a 22,000 square foot store and will offer a selection of beer, wine, and spirits with additional specialty grocery, charcuterie, and general merchandise area of the store. There will also be a tasting and education area in the center portion of the store. And I can answer any additional questions that the council may have. Great, thank you. Yeah. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Proponent? Opponent. Okay, come on down. Uh, good afternoon, Nick Wagner, 2762 South 129th Avenue, representing Spirits and Things. Um, about three months ago, I was in front of you, fine ladies and gentlemen, to help me grow my business. Um, we've been a small family-owned liquor store in that same shopping plaza since 1982. Um, you were very supportive to help us a obtain a um, catering endorsement on our liquor license. What I'm here to ask you to do today is really reconsider if we need another massive chain liquor store within a 12 block radius of where we are. It was just a year ago that Wine, Beer and Spirits opened up by Oakview Mall, 12 blocks away. That was hard enough on our business. And now we're sitting here looking at another 22,000 square foot liquor store, 100 yards from my front door. Uh, my family has worked really hard over the past almost four decades to build a family owned business that Omaha can be proud of. And if this liquor license is approved, or at least if you could please just reconsider it, um, it's going to put my family's business in grave danger. So I'm here just to uh, ask for your reconsideration. It would be the fourth liquor license in the one small plaza. You have Walgreens, you have Cohen and Kelly's, you have Spirits and Things, and then you'd have a massive 22,000 square foot big box liquor store, again within a 12 block radius of another massive big box liquor store, Wine, Beer, and Spirits. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents today? See none, we'll close the public hearing. Council members, a note that we would have to waive rule number seven uh, in order to consider this item uh, as it's went 300 feet of a park. Any lights or motions? Johnson. Aye. Melton. Clermont. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Aye. I had a light on. Post my comments during the vote, but. I, go ahead. You had your light on. I was just going to say, um, Nick, thanks for coming down today. Um, I, I appreciate your comments and, and, um, and what you have worked on for so many years, but um, unfortunately, I, I'm going to vote for this, but I wanted to let you know that you know, we can't vote for one business and not for another. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, I just wanted to let you know that that's the reason for the vote. But I, I do wish you luck and, and I will continue to, you know, visit destinations like your family's store. So I wish you luck, thank you. Thank you. And your vote. <laughs> Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you. Item 13, to consider a Class C liquor license application for Omaha Kebabs located at 2101 North 120th Street, Suite C5. Public hearing and vote on number 13 is today. I believe we have the applicant by Zoom. Name and address there, please. I'll be off mute here in just a second. <laughs> 2101 North 120th Street, Unit C5, Omaha, 68164. Thank you. I'm here to answer questions, right? Uh, no. 
I don't know. <laughs> I have my attorney with me, but I don't know. He's on a Zoom meeting as well. You, so, and can you repeat your name one more time for the record, too? We didn't hear that because of the mute button. Arthur Lalikian. Great. Thank you. And we also have an attorney, I believe, on the line. Bradley, would you like to also? Um, uh, yeah, Bradley Boyum, uh, on behalf of the applicant, uh, my address, my business, my, my home address is 2911 South 117th Street, Omaha, Nebraska, 68144. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Seeing none, public hearings closed? Roll call. Johnson. Thomas. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 13 is approved 7 to 0. Item 14 to consider a Class C liquor license application for Timber Creek Pizza Pub and Grill located at 6718 South 178th Street. Public hearing on vote on number 14 is today. I believe we have the applicant Stacy Mead by Zoom. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, this is Stacy Mead. The, my address is 8929 North 172nd Street, Bennington, Nebraska, 68007. Happy. happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Any other proponents today? See none, any opponents? Public hearings closed? Roll call. Johnson. Thomas. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 14 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 15 to consider a Class D liquor license application for Speedy Mart 2884, located at 2901 North 72nd Street. Public hearing and vote on number 15 is today. The applicant, please. Hi there, John Dilsaver, D-I-L-S-A-V-E-R, 8400 I Street, Omaha, Nebraska. Represent Western Oil 2, Speedy Mart, if there's any questions. Great, thank you. Any other proponents today? Any opponents? Public hearings closed. Roll call. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 15 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 16, to consider a Class K liquor license application for Saddle Creek Breakfast Club, located at 1540 North Saddle Creek Road. Public hearing and vote on number 16 is today. Proponents, please. Hello, my name is Kristen May, um, 13516 Marinda Street. And I'm here to answer any questions. Um, basically, we've identified some things throughout the city that we'd like to be a part of and um, basically a class K adding on to our um, class I would benefit us with the um, special designated licenses. So here to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. I'll just say um, this is my district and I'm really pleased to see you guys doing so well Good again. You. Yeah, thank you. And I think the uh, catering license, license will be a great benefit, I'm sure, to the business also. We do have a lot of um, big ideas for the rest of North Saddle Creek there Good that we want to engage, engage you on. And uh, you guys are a great anchor right there that I, I know will help get that done. So I yeah. appreciate We've that. We've got some other concepts coming, so we're excited. So. Excellent. Thank Let you. us know. <laughs> Is there a motion? Second. Roll call. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. And 16 is approved, 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearing on agenda items 17 through 21 were held on June 8th. Seventeen through twenty. <laughs> I'll second that. Roll call. <laughs> Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yep. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. As was noted, we'll take number thirty nine off the consent agenda. But first we will do the public hearings on agenda items numbers twenty two through thirty eight and then forty through forty five today. If you rest, wish to address the city council regarding these items, Please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself, your name and address, and who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. 
I believe we do have an applicant on item number 23. Go ahead. Hi, Lavanya Goodwin, uh, address 3116 North 24th Street, and I'm here for agenda item 30, 29, sorry, for the resolution for our application for lease of city property, and I'm here to answer any questions. Ben. Ben Swan, Swan Development, 3515 Hawthorne Avenue, uh, here as the developer for the project. Okay. Thanks for being here. Any other proponents or, oppon or opponents on these items? Item number 23, do you want to give Danny Riley a chance to speak here? We'll see if he has, if he's here to answer any questions. One second, Mr. Storr, we have an applicant speaking here. Mr. Riley? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, applying to uh, for a liquor license for Godfather's Pizza Incorporated. Uh, my address is 1812 Twin Ridge Boulevard. Great, just here to answer questions, right? Yes. Thank you. So Mr. Storr, the items we're, we're speaking to right now are 22 through 38 and 40 through 45. Any other speakers on these items today? Seeing none? Is there a motion? Uh, that we uh, pull this off of the consent agenda uh, for additional information. Pardon me? Um, Do you have questions today? Or are you asking that be voted upon separately? Yeah, I would like to do that separately. Okay. I'll do a motion to approve item 22 through 28, item 30 through 38, and item 40 through 45. There's a motion and a second to approve those items. Roll call. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Second. Ms. Johnson, did you wish to speak to that one further? Yes, I would like to um, lay this over for questions later. There's already a motion and a second to approve it. So you would have to, be, would have to withdraw. That's correct. To when, though? I move to uh, lay this over, please. Uh, yeah. Oh, for one week? We don't have time. It'd have to be the 29th. Oh, for the 29th, then. Okay. okay. There's a motion to lay over two weeks and a second. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't remember that it was lay over. Mr. Harding. Um, I have, um, no, we didn't talk about this during pre-council and I just need a little bit more time to, um, research this item and, um, discuss it with, um, the more details, more information. Um, I do have constituents that have, um, reached out to me for some additional questions. Good afternoon, members of the council. Would you like me to repeat my address? Yeah, please. Three, ben Swan, 3515 Hawthorne, Omaha, Nebraska, 68131. Thank you. Lavanya Goodwin, 3116 North 24th Street. The only question I'm going to ask Ben or Lavanya is uh, if, if a two week delay is, is in any way uh, problematic to your, to your efforts here. I would say that it doesn't help the project. We've had ex extensive delays since we put our permit application in. I do have detailed information. I can we can answer any questions right now. This is uh, just a city sidewalk yeah, right I away know. lease. It's fairly yeah. routine so to allow the doors to swing out. And this is to complete. That's, 
If I may state, this is to further complete a CBDG project, which we've, uh, you know, been with on time with, uh, you know, deadlines up until now. Yeah. And so, uh, again, if you think about our North 24th Street Business Improvement District, this is a project to improve a, you know, quasi-local landmark. And so we'd like to have permission from the council to move forward. It's just, and it's just, again, for a patio area. Everything's going to stay back. Yeah, I, I've got a schematic of it that I could present yeah, for the board. Yeah, please do, Ben. I might need a little help with the Zoom. You can do it yourself. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Here we go. So you can see the bumped out curb area that was designed by Earhart Griffin and Associates. Uh, we worked with Public Works, Ryan Haas and Public Works uh, for the site triangles. Um, we've got our insurance in place for the construction. We've got the engineer's estimate, that's all on file. This is to allow the doors to swing out uh, onto the city right away. We're leasing the city right away and we're putting a public patio on there. Um, also bumping out the curb, which would improve pedestrian safety and beautification in the area. And again, that's uh, at the expense of the project, as opposed to the city of Omaha. Yeah. It's also a recommendation by Public Works, so we're just really adhering to, you know, what the city has required of us to do. And I've got a copy of that corrections report that the Public Works Department was recommending we do this, and I can provide that if the council would like to review that. Out there, so I'll ask Ms. Johnson. Is, did do those are your questions addressed with that? No, sir. They have not been. Um, these are CDBG funds. Um, the constituents in District 2 is concerned about how those uh, benefits are being applied. Um, I do need some more time to investigate um, some more hard um, uh, facts uh, regarding this project so that I can uh, represent my district uh, to the fullest. Uh, individuals have voted me an office to uh, look into things like this, and um, this is uh, this is CDBG funds, and I'm sorry, but um, I will have to ask for the time um, to research and get additional information uh, regarding the project so that I can sufficiently answer the questions that are being asked of me uh, by my constituents. I would res respectfully ask that this body respect that. So May ben, I? Ben and, I'm sorry, Ben and LaDonia, um, certainly generally if, there, if a council member has a project in their district and they've asked for a little more time, it's, it's fairly customary to, to grant that request. So I am going to remove my motion. And I, I can, yeah. go ahead. I respect that. Uh, I would like to mention that all the CBDG funds were approved by public hearing. You're I right. believe that uh, this was approved uh, June of last year, June 29th, I believe, 2020. All this has been full disclosure to the public, and I would like to have this on record that I believe that this is personal between Juanita Johnson and any grievances she might have toward the BID or myself. Please put that on record. Uh, but again, I think the first step would be to, to review the, the public hearing that went forth to approve these items over a year ago and every step in the way. And so, you know, I would hope that we could move forward as we've had full, full support from the council, yep. from planning, from public works, and full disclosure to the public. I, I would agree. I, this has gone through the public process. You are correct, and it was approved with uh, CDBG funds from or from the last package. Um, I fully intend to support this, and I will. Um, but I I, I will um, yield to my council members' request to have it laid over. So there's a motion to lay over in a second. <coughs> Roll call for two weeks. Uh, my light was still on, but now it's off. Uh, do you wish to speak? Go ahead. A few problems today, and I know we're the speakers. <laughs> no, I just wanted to say I just wanted to clarify. This is simply stating Public Works is requiring so us, the city, um, you need to bump the curb out. So you're bumping out the curb, and you're leasing the area that's in the city right away where your patio is going. 
and the doors to swing out. So and this the door, is because yeah, they, they want the this doors isn't really about the CDBG grant so or it, this is just a compliance with the that, administrative requirements. That's what I wanted to clarify. This it has nothing to really do with the CDBG project. This has to do with you're just leasing some space because it's city right away. That's it. I mean, if we said no, then actually you wouldn't be able to follow what the city public works is requiring you to do. And really, what you're doing is you're paying the city to improve for, the city. I believe that's the situation for the use of this right of way land. Like that's it. That's Absolutely. what we're doing on the in this particular agenda item. Absolutely. And then I see here on your application, you're actually going to be improving the area with some landscaping and things around it. So it's really going to kind of beautify. Yes, it's going to further beautify, you know, what has been a vacant lot and what has been a deteriorating building on the front right. footage of North 24th Street. And you're asking to pay us in order for you to. Yes, do and to pay. write an insurance bond of $10,000. So really, we're taking the brunt of this in order right. to contribute to public improvement. It, it should be noted that these are not improvements to the Goodwin property. These are municipal improvements to the <coughs> public right of way. To the city right of way. To the way. city yeah. right of yeah. way. Yeah. So these will slow down traffic. These will improve safety. These are uh, monies being spent to improve right. the conditions along North 24th Street. Okay. Thank you. I'm in full support of the project, and I think it's great, and I appreciate I appreciate your, what you're doing there. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. And if there's any oversight to any additional questions, I'd appreciate another council member being a part of that discussion. Please. Thank you. So I don't disagree with what's been said here, but there is a motion to lay over and a second. And we do typically give uh, the council member, especially from that district, the courtesy of doing that if they're, if they're seeking more information. So I'll call the roll call on that motion. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Palermo? Yes. Rowe? Bagley? Aye. Harding? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Two weeks later. Thank you. We do have the mayor here today. Um, we do still have number 39 to do on this list, but realizing that she's here to present on number 49, I'll move number 49 up on the agenda if there's no objection. Seeing, nine, seeing none, the public hearing on number 49 is today. Mayor Stoddard. Thank you, President Festerson. Good afternoon, City Council members, Jean Stothert. I'm the mayor of Omaha, 1819 Farnham. Since I announced that Tom Warren, who, by the way, is present today and seated behind me, will join my administration as my next chief of staff, I have received many, many supportive and congratulatory messages. I am thrilled that he accepted my offer, and I ask for your vote to approve his personal service contract. The chief of staff position requires someone with a wide variety of skills, trusted relationships, negotiation, problem solving, customer service, knowledge of city ordinance and law, city finances, emergency management and personnel, really a jack of all trades. Tom Warren is recognized and respected as a community leader, and he shares my priorities, including public safety, which makes his law enforcement background very important. He served 24 years with the Omaha Police Department, including four years as chief of police until his retirement in 2008. Tom supports the goals of my administration to make Omaha a safe, growing, financially stable, diverse, and inclusive city. He is an active in numerous community organizations and serves on many boards, including Mecca. He has resigned that appointment and I will soon ask you to approve my recommendation for a new member to serve the remaining four years of his term on Mecca. As you know, city ordinance does not permit a retired employee to return to regular full-time employment. And Internal Revenue Code does not allow an employee to be a member of both the police and civilian pension systems. Employees in the mayor's office must contribute to the civilian pension it is a requirement of employment, and employees cannot opt out. Tom receives a pension from the Police and Fire Pension Fund and will continue to receive his pension in this position. Tom will be paid $150,000 annually with a 3% increase each year, but he will not receive any city additional city benefits. I'm very proud of the relationship that my administration has had with the city council. 
We accomplish so much when we work together. And we will continue to work together, and each of you will work with Tom, I know you will, very closely over the next four years. With your approval of the agreement, Tom's first day will be July 1st, and we are looking forward to it. So thank you for your consideration to this contract today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other proponents today on number 49? Seeing none, any opponents? Up, oh, Luis. Luis Jimenez, 3306 Burt Street. I'm a proponent. Um, I'm looking at this as a contract, a uh, independent contract uh, agreement. And I heard during pre-council that there's been about like six that the city has approved for positions in the city government. I wish the mayor luck in the ne these next four years and hopefully this is a good choice for this position. Um, one thing I wanna point out is the 3% increase in pay. I, each year, I think it might amount to a 2% pay increase because inflation has been really low. And uh, I think that's a good clause where anybody that is working annually gets a 3% increase. I think that's important. Um, and uh, good luck to you guys too, working with this person in this, at the mayor's office. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents today? See none opponents. Hello, Deshaun Cunningham, 821 Wilshire Avenue, Los Angeles, California. I am in Omaha until I go back to school in the fall. Um, and I'm actually not opposed to this. I actually had a question and the mayor actually cleared it up. I was confused about the salary. Uh, I was under the impression that it almost might amount to two salaries, so I'm actually glad you brought that up. So I actually don't have any objections. The mayor answered that question um, for me. I've been working with the police chief Schmader for a number of years. I met with him yesterday. We discussed our work going forward with Tommy Warren. So I feel like this will be a good position and I look forward to working with both of you in the future. So good luck. Okay. Thank you. Any other opponents today? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Next item. Back to 39, that's closed. Item 39, a resolution to approve the City of Omaha Park Rules. The public hearing and vote on number 39 is today. We'll start with uh, Director Kalsevich to, pr to present on the proposed city, city Park Rules. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the City Council, Matt Kalsevich, Parks, Recreation, and Public Property Director, 1819 Farnham Street. The park rules were brought before the city council last year with a request for additional research and insight uh, about some specific items. Uh, but upon my arrival here with the city of Omaha in this position on December 14th, we started a process uh, of review and assessment uh, under my time. And I wanted to walk you through some of that process before I uh, point out a few of the specific changes and modifications to the rules. We started with three goals. First and foremost, we wanted to evaluate safety, and we wanted to talk about how we could do things within the scope of these rules to better inform and educate people. Uh, so we took a look at things from that perspective and worked with various groups about assessing the different specific rules we were uh, looking to address, in addition to a global perspective about how all of these rules functioned. That second goal I mentioned just a little bit already about knowledge. We wanted to uh, help the community have more understanding. We wanted to bring this in front of the city council so they could see, so all of you could see the information that we were sharing and how this would impact and benefit our park system. And then finally with equity, we want to accommodate and support the most people we can uh, with, without being a hindrance on the other aspects of our services. And there's a challenge there. Some things will be uh, an impact on another, and certainly we want to be sensitive and thoughtful about the way one rule impacts another. Our process uh, started with uh, a review and outreach. Um, we re we uh, communicated with several different organizations that had an impact on some of the specific rules we were looking to address. That included the National Par Recreation and Park Association, the Army Corps of Engineers, 
Nebraska Game and Parks, American Association of State Highway Transportation, American Trail, Federal Aviation Administration, and the Omaha Police Department. Uh, there were several other communities, uh, both here in the Omaha area in the state of Nebraska, uh, as well as in the region that we referenced in regards to specific things we were looking to address. Again, the, the rules that we're presenting to you are a full scope of rules for our system. Uh, so there are some very specific items in here, but again, it's a global document trying to incorporate and encompass as much as we can to help people understand uh, our practices and policies. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the uh, time to evaluate. We've committed to uh, having there be a future assessment annually by our team uh, to review that everything we have in place is functioning the way we expect uh, and it is existing in a way that is most productive and effective. Uh, in this case, the, we're looking for uh, specific manageable uh, adjustments as we bring potential changes to you that we can assess and review and ensure work in the way that we uh, believe they will. Uh, there are some things that we didn't necessarily address today, uh, but certainly wanted you to know that there are some bigger review things out there for us uh, down the road in case they come up as a question or an issue, but they needed more time to review. Um, things like our uh, fishing rules, uh, hours of facilities, and certainly it's our goal to identify any other rules that need to be added, or again, rules that exist that need to be modified in the appropriate way to bring back to you annually as needed. Uh, going to the document and again, the communication that was shared with council about the specific changes, first and foremost, there really aren't a lot of things, which is encouraging in the sense that we have things in a really good spot today as they exist. Uh, for example, we're not proposing a change to any of our park or trail use hours. Um, so all of those are being maintained as they have been in the past. But there are some specific areas where we did make some modifications and you'll hear some of our goals in, in I hope, in the way that we've restructured things. Uh, first off, number four uh, in the document that you were provided in your packet, uh, we have sledding. And we did wanna emphasize that that's an at your, risk, at your own risk activity in our parks. And we also worked with the Army Corps of Engineers on creating access at the dam sites with a special sensitivity to avoiding the uh, uh, vents and um, equipment to monitor the functions of the dam uh, above the surface and we will have that additionally signed for this next season as well. Uh, move on to number 14, and really a new section in the rules addressing the use of drones in parks. That was one of the main focus of the update of the document. We we'll work closely with, uh, as I mentioned, the FAA and the Omaha Police Department to get perspective on what we're using here as our starting point to again assess and review that what we've uh, selected here as our function would be the best situation for uh, our city. Uh, and you can see there's some parameters about the weight of the drone, uh, as well as an emphasis on relying on the FAA rules and regulations uh, that uh, adjudicate and are the jurisdiction really over drones in the air. Now we put in some parameters about how those may or may not exist in the parks. Uh, in this case, we're not allowing drones to take off or land, thinking about some of the varied use in parks and that being perhaps one of the areas of engagement that we'd be, be concerned about uh, even though per FAA regulations, drones are allowed to really fly anywhere uh, under the height restriction and not over people um, as some of that is spelled out in more detail through them. Uh, and then finally, with motorized vehicles on trails, this was one of the big areas that I know was asked for a review. And, and we've gone to the level of spelling out some more of the details about what is eligible to be used on trails. The big one being uh, the e-bikes and e-scooters. Uh, and we know that was something that was approved here recently as well uh, for use within the city. Uh, trails now being included in this proposal for the use of both those e-bikes and e-scooters. One of the safety elements that we integrated was not necessarily speed limit, but after review and assessment of recommended maximum speed of 20 miles per hour, thinking about the multi-use multi function of our recreational trails, uh, trying to identify what would work best in terms of cyclists, walkers, joggers, people with their animals uh, and others all using that same space uh, and having a recognition of that speed being a potential risk uh, and also identifying what would be uh, perhaps common practice uh, as well as additional signage that will complement this out in the field uh, about the way to indicate uh, an opportunity to pass or again have those uh, close direct interactions uh, as we have multiple users in that trail space. 
with that, I will uh, turn it over to any questions or concerns of the council. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to proponents. Is there one in the chambers that are, is a proponent for number 39? Luis Jimenez, 3306 Bird Street. I'm a proponent. Um, I recently become concerned about the time hours of parks because of um, misuse of the park. People kind of been noticing people laying around by the park where I live and past 11 p.m. And I had called the police over by 33rd in California. I did it two times. And uh, that is very concerning because they're kind of drunk. They're drunk people to do that, that break the hour um, regulation. I don't know if 11 p.m. is good. I think maybe 10.30 p.m. for closing, except for like courts or um, fields but just like where people can lay around, especially if there's vegetation, um, like bushes and low hanging branches, that those areas need to be closed as soon as possible because then that gives opportunity for drunk people to treat it like uh, their own space. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents in the chambers? See none, we do have a proponent regist registered by Zoom, Julie Harris of Bike Walk, Nebraska. Julie. Good afternoon, I'm Julie Harris with Bike Not Walk, Nebraska, 1905 Harney Street, number 401G. Um, I would like to commend um, the, the revision of the rule about the e-bikes. I think that is very important and we really appreciate the Parks Department taking time to, to think that through and uh, make the right decision on that. Um, having said that, the uh, the issue of the hours of operation um, for the parks also extends to the trails. And this is an issue that we've been discussing with the Parks Department. Um, in fact, after the last meeting in October of 2020, I emailed the Parks Department and asked to be put on a list of stakeholders to be consulted because our trails are tr truly used for transportation, not just for recreation and they need to be treated as such. We don't close streets at 11 p.m. We shouldn't close the trails at 11 p.m. And if we want to encourage people to be on bikes, um, whether it's they're coming home from their places of employment, whether they're opting to ride a bike rather than get in a car, if they've been out drinking, whatever it might be, we need to keep these trails open for transportation. Um, I believe after this, the last time they, you know, there was a list made because stakeholders were not engaged in the process and I know I was not engaged, and I don't know if any other local stakeholders were engaged. So um, I, I think it's important that we treat our trails for transportation, and I'd look, really like to see them exempted from those park rules. I don't see any reason to continue to delay that because it's an issue that we've been bringing up for months. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move to opponents. Any opponents in the chambers? Please come down. Hello, Sarah Johnson, 2316 North 52nd Street. Um, first of all, I just want to make it clear that I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I am a Mode Shift Omaha member, but not speaking on behalf of the organization, although I do support all of the information that was in the letter that you received from them today. I'm speaking in opposition to the proposed park rules, specifically the closing times. As Julie mentioned earlier, um, a lot of local advocates are pretty upset that this is being ignored as transportation corridors. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to continue to waste your time and ours here today by continuing to reiterate the same conversation that we've been a part of um, since before the new director was here. Transportation, trails are transportation and recreation, of course. They're called multi-use trails. I hear NRD say multi-use, meaning recreation, transportation, and access to natural resources. So um, a lot of times, you know, there's pushback. Oh, you don't need more bike lanes, we have trails. Well, if trails are transportation, then they need to be treated like transportation. As Julie said, we don't close down roads during certain times. We shouldn't do the same thing to trails. Um, I also heard a little bit of discussion about the need to potentially reclassify trails um, as transportation instead of recreation. But I find that a little bit flummoxing because some of the trail miles were built with ISTEA funding, which I'll, I'll 
turn in this document rather than read it all to you, but ISTEA stands for Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act. So the trails were built with transportation money. Uh, also, MAPA recognizes that they're part of our transportation system because on their website, when you look at the Omaha bike map, it says, we hope this map helps you, blah, 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 method of transportation. They go on to include trails as part of the Regional Transit Vision Report, the Heartland 2050 Report, on and on and on. Also, Metro recognizes trails as part of the transportation system because you'll find bus stop signs on the trails. If that doesn't mean they're part of the transportation system, I'm not sure what does. B-Cycle understands the importance of bikes as transportation. That's why you'll find countless, well, you could count them, but a lot of B-Cycle stations right on the trails. Trails are transportation. Um, so I'm hoping that today we can all come to the conclusion together as a community that trails are transportation and keep them open 24 hours as such. <clears throat> Talked a little bit about a survey that was brought to the community. I'm wondering who all do we think took that survey? It's probably folks that look a lot like me who have the opportunity to take the time to take an online survey. Maybe it's not the folks that have three jobs and don't have the you know, ability or time to, to complete the survey. Maybe they don't have a car. Maybe they don't have time today to show up and beg you not to arrest them when they're traveling home by bike after a late shift. What about UNO students attempting to get back and forth from campuses? There's a library on the north campus, dorms on the south campus. If they don't go from A to B in a car, is that illegal? Anyway, I think that we're getting to the point of trails or transportation. I think that that's been clear. Um, we're also helping the Maha Music Festival and College World Series as Mode Shift Park Bikes for the Bike Valley coming up. Those are events that are pretty much late night events. I'm wondering if we are gonna have to specifically ask for exceptions on those times to come to you. I know there is an, you know, a list of exceptions and it says that if we ask you for exceptions that you'll grant them, but I think that it's just easier to once and for all say trails are transportation, they should be treated as such. Here is an easy way to make an amendment. Under the exceptions, you already are talking about motor vehicles on access roads. You could very easily just add a further exemption Trails used for transportation. You could also, like with the sledding thing, you could say it's at your own risk. I know there's a little bit of pushback on it's dark at night. Well, it gets dark at five o'clock in the winter, so for, t yeah, I don't know, there's just a lot of issues that I have. And I think the main thing is we need to talk about equity, um, which I was glad to hear you bring up because that is very important. Um, I think that when it's up to OPD's discretion, how to enforce this, we know that there's a disproportionate amount of black and brown community members who are going to be impacted. We don't need to create any more opportunities for these communities to be traumatized by the police. I think it's important to bring up the fact that a routine traffic stop turned deadly in your district last week um, for just what should have been a routine traffic stop. So I'm just kind of pleading today that we decrease the need for interactions with OPD, not increase them. And when we codify something like this, we know it's gonna turn into an equity issue and we know how that can end up. Um, Basically, we just now more than ever with the pandemic and everything else, we need to be making sure that we are creating more safe opportunities and places for folks to ride day or night. Um, I'll stop there, but happy to answer any questions as per usual. Was grateful to be counted on as the expert last time when we were talking about e-bikes because I'm a big nerd about this stuff. I care a lot about it and I'm grateful for your time. Thank you. Any other opponents in the chambers today? Please come down. Hello. My name is Lori Elliott Bartle, and I live at 310 South 52nd Street in District 3. Um, I'm here in opposition um, to the particular point in the park rules about defining trails and how they're used. Um, I was pleased to see the rules um, allowing for e-bikes and scooters on the trails. Um, I see many of those as I use the trails. And I use the trails personally, both for transportation and for recreation. Um, I think uh, Julie and Sarah have both raised important points about how trails should be considered part of the transportation network. And many existing agencies already consider them as such. Um, so I join their voices in asking you to also continue to define trails for transportation use and make the appropriate changes to um, ensure that. Um, I see the trails as the backbone of a good network and I'm hoping to see the city move forward in ways that expand upon the trail system by building protected bike lanes and further using design um, to create a safe network of transportation for all modes of transportation. 
um, because ultimately these will help um, increase both public health and public safety. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents in the chamber? Hello, Scott Blake, 2316 North 52nd Street, speaking in opposition of item number 39. The main problem I have is that park trails are closed from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. The rules make exceptions for motor vehicles on some roads that run through certain parks, so we know the city can, and can accommodate people in cars, but what about pedestrians and cyclists? We brought this up to Dennis Byers and Jenk Lindner last year, so you, have already, you already have had time to evaluate it. We don't need another study or survey to placate vulnerable road users while you stall and do nothing. Speaking of surveys, the survey that the Parks Department sent out in March did not have the word transportation in it. So of course the results were skewed towards recreation only. There are countless contradictions. I only have a couple of minutes to talk, so here are just a few. So the, yeah, Sarah talked about the city council just approved the Maha Festival to play music until midnight at Stinson Park. Mode Shift is gonna be doing bike ballet at that event. The Keystone Trail, which is directly behind the stage, closes at 11. Is council member Begley gonna tell the police not to enfor enforce the park rules? Next, the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge in District 2 is actually open 24 hours a day but the Riverfront Trail closes at 11, and only on the Omaha side. I've personally ridden this trail late at night, coming home from Stir Concert Cove in Council Bluffs, and there are eight scheduled concerts this summer, not to mention the College World Series next week. On to Spring Lake in Palermo's district. Spring Lake Drive got removed from the list of motor vehicle exemptions. That means that you're no longer allowed to be able to drive a car through Spring Lake. It's, it is a major thoroughfare. Plus, plus, Spring Lake Trail is on the bike network map and the Paths of Discovery Trail map up in the Parks Department and on the City of Omaha's website. Is that that? You can't see, but in extremely small font, it says, thanks to the City of Omaha Planning Department. There's Spring Lake, there's the Riverfront, there's Stinson Park. This, this rule truly affects every district. The Keystone Trail runs through one, three, and four. The Big Papio starts in Hefflinger Park, District 7. Hefflinger Park Road is on the list of motor vehicle exemptions, but the trail which runs through District 5 and 7 is not. The West Papio 144th Street, Street Trail also runs through Districts 5, 6, and 7. District 2 has the Paxton, Paxton Boulevard Trail, the Riverfront Trail, which connects to the Bob, and the upcoming North Omaha Trail. Councilmember Johnson, do we really need to give the police another reason to chase after people in your community? District 3 has the Field Club Trail. I think it's that one? Turner Boulevard Trail, which, which will intersect with the protected bike lanes on Harney Street. This rule is confusing and does not make the streets any safer. And then the last thing that I'm really most concerned about is what are the signs gonna say? Mostly, will they spell the word recreation correctly? I'm serious, look closer. This is not Photoshopped. They misspelled the word recreation. I know nobody's gonna admit that they made a mistake, and I know we're not allowed to ask any questions, but I really wanna know, how do you pronounce this new word? Is it recreation or recreation? This embarrassing typo wasted tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents in the chambers? Larry Storr, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, <coughs> Omaha, 68132. I am against it because I don't think we've really had enough discussion. It's apparent from the last two opponents that there's been a lot of things not thought about. 
First of all, however, I think our state constitution says you will pass no special laws. This seems to be a law special for bikes, not necessarily for cars. We close some areas at 11, other areas we don't. But connecting all these bike paths, if that's, all, if that's your ultimate goal, then you're gonna have to consider that uh, people can't get everywhere they wanna go and home by 11. So open the parks up all night for everybody, everybody and all the vehicles. We don't enforce the law all the time in Memorial Park. It's supposed to close at 11, but it doesn't really. Uh, so this is not a vote on a law. It's not an ordinance. It's a resolution. Somewhere down the road, I guess you'll make it a law, but I don't think you ought to vote on it today based on what you've heard. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents in the chamber? Hey everybody, my name is Kai. I um, 1360 South 75th Street, um, and Your I. Last name too, there, Kai. Oh, sorry, Kylisha Peak is my whole name. Um, Thank you. But I agree with what everyone has said before. But I really want to um, highlight kind of who this will affect. Um, people do use the parks as places to sleep, unfortunately. Um, so I would just ask that you guys consider those people um, and uh, kind of like maybe do something that's like proactive instead of reactive um but yes that's it thank, thank you. you any other opponents here today see none i know we do have an opponent registered by zoom william carmichael Hello, uh, I am William Carmichael. I live at uh, 127, uh, 23 Woodcrest Plaza in Millard. And uh, I also would like to see an additional exception made to rule one before it's made a part of the city ordinances to exempt the city's trail network from the 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. close time. Uh, I, I noted from a document put out by the planning department that in 2020, uh, we saw a 77% increase in bicycle trail, in bicycle traffic on the city's trail network, a 50% increase in pedestrian traffic. So we know that usage is growing rapidly. And shutting these pathways down at night, along with the parks themselves, creates an undue burden on people who need to travel without a car. And with the usage of the trail system higher than it's ever been, I think this is the moment that we should put these alternate modes of transportation on an equal footing with the automobiles. Now, shutting the trails down for purported safety reasons does not make a lot of sense because the alternative to using these trails is to share the road with cars, far riskier at night than during the day. Uh, if the concern is about loitering, uh, that ought to be simple enough to address as well. People who are using the trails to travel, they're moving. They are manifestly not loitering. Um, and I'm, and I'm gonna quote from the Papio Missouri River National Resource District website. This is a direct quote. Recreation is not its sole function. These trails are an excellent alternative to the use of automobiles and other more traditional methods of transportation. And I, and I think the basis for Asking for this exception is because people need access to this system to get around. And if we are willing to say in the case of sledding, you do this at your own risk, uh, I would just like to see an exception made for a good reason rather than just acknowledging that people are gonna do it anyways, no matter what decision we make here today. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kalsevich, we'll give you a chance to respond if you'd like to address anything you've heard there, and then we'll see if council members have questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the council, Matt Kalsevich, Parks, Recreation, and Public Property Director, 1819 Farnham Street. So I, I truly appreciate the passion and conviction of the people who spoke, and certainly we want to pe be progressive in terms of the way that we meet the expectations of the community. Uh, that being said, I'll clarify a few things, and, and then I'll bring up some points of concern and, and how we want to be thoughtful about any process to change anything that's been a long-standing policy in our system. 
Again, I'll emphasize this is the way it exists today and has existed for a long time. So the concern about dramatic change on this allowed being allowed to stay as is, it's really the function we have today that is working fairly well in terms of an administration, um, an oversight standpoint. Uh, again, not that we can't or shouldn't progress, but there's a, a way we can do that very thoughtfully and appropriately. Uh, I'll reference the survey, an internal tool for us as part of our assessment. Uh, I know there was a claim that maybe it didn't reach as many people as it could have or should have. Uh, in this case, a community survey, which sometimes doesn't get the greatest response, but it is a tool in an effort to collect feedback. Uh, we received almost 1,600 responses. And of those responses, only 1.39%, so 22 of the almost 1,600, said they mainly use the trails to commute. So there was that aspect of the survey identifying people who use it for commuting purposes. I know transportation was the word used in, in this case in, in one of the rebuttal, but uh, commute was definitely highlighted. Uh, as far as looking at the roads, uh, the roads are already, or the streets are established as a transportation network, and the park roads that have been included in that network were identified for just such a, re a reason, and that's currently, again, why those happen to be included the way they are in the transportation network, different than maybe the trails. And I am committed, and it's something I said to you early on, about reviewing these annually and making sure we progress and, and assess things in the way that, again, meets the, the expectations of the community and does things in the best way possible. In this case, and, and this list can be applied to a lot of things, but as far as just making a decision today to go to 24-hour trail access, and again, the, the people who spoke referenced maybe uh, the time that's already happened where they've made a point about this being a concern. And I have talked to the groups who've shared information with me about uh, wanting to get together and, and having my opportunity to dialogue with them, which I'm anxious and excited about. Uh, but uh, I look at things in, in this case in terms of making a thoughtful and educated decision about a, a, a specific change. For example, we're integrating e-bikes and e-scooters into the use of trails. Those trails integrate into different places maybe than the streets were designed to, so we want to make sure that function happens appropriately before we maybe make, again, a change to the hours that things are able to be used. Uh, they mentioned funding, and funding is a unique and, and tricky aspect of uh, support for trails, and there are some things that they reference that have merit. There's some other things in the way that we do uh, and handle our business and administration now that could be affected, and we just want to make sure that doesn't detract from opportunities we have to expand the system, which again is a major initiative for not just us as a department, but the city. Uh, we have management practices in place in terms of the way we do uh, repairs and even things like snow removal that could be part of a discussion on making a pivot and, and a change of this magnitude. Uh, there is the enforcement part of this. We would definitely want to get together with our police counterparts to ensure that we're not missing anything in terms of the way this might change for the needs of our specific community. Uh, we have a situation with other cities in which their trails butt up to our trails and we, and we meet city uh, boundaries and ensure that they're ready to accommodate the same kind of use or if they have concerns about the way those might intermingle with each other. Uh, homeowners near those trails and their expectation about how there would be interaction or activity or involvement on the trails during those times, again, at this point where that hasn't been promoted is something that would be allowed or eligible. Uh, we also have um, the majority of users, again, being recreational in nature, not to say that what people have said here about it being a transportation thoroughfare shouldn't be highly considered, but again, trying to find the place where we can serve the greatest number of people with specific guidelines, that is the majority of things that on this day in terms of where we've been able to receive response. And then, again, the example of things with peer cities and recreation, park and recreation departments from around the country that have either applied this or not applied this, and lessons learned and best practices and things that, again, we just want to be thoughtful and thorough about in terms of implementing something new uh, of this magnitude. So again, I'm open to a discussion, I'm open to assessment, and we definitely want to do all we can to take care of as many people as we can, but have a process and a dialogue, and I'm already, again, willing and happy and have said I'm wanting to engage with that and with those groups as I can. Thank you. We'll close public hearing. Councilman Harding, you're recognized. Questions, I think. Yes. Um, the, um, the the funds, in part, that have been used to develop some of these trails, are, are there any restrictions as to what those uses can be since based upon that funding? 
it, it's a very broad range of funding options, and so we have taken advantage of funding where we've had a lot of latitude and we've passed on funding that have carried certain restrictions on them. At this point, all the funding we've received, we've used as uh, appropriated or allocated. We're just trying to make sure that moving forward, we have a system in place that allows us to have the greatest outreach to other funding pieces. Again, the number that gets thrown around about trail development is that it costs about a million dollars a mile. Uh, is kind of a rough estimate on how that typically exists per the guidelines that our city use and some of the national standards. So we're just trying to see that we have enough or, or the most access to the pots of funding that are available to support trail growth and, and development. Okay, so it, it was mentioned some of the like ice tea mm -hmm. funds have been used for some of the trail development, but again, there weren't any, as, as far as you know, there weren't any restrictions no. as to once those were developed, how the, they could be used or modifications of use? Correct. As, as, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, had a, a conversation, just a side conversation with the um, acting city attorney too about, um, and I, your, your willingness to say, you know, let, let's do something now and, and we can take a, we can continue to review and, and take a look at things. Um, I am open to the idea of, of making an amendment, but rather than doing an amendment uh, on the floor to make sure that we properly address all components of a, a, an amendment that would, would cover what we're trying to accomplish, um, I think I'd be open at this point to maybe laying this over so that we can accomplish that. Um, that's where, that's kind of where my thought process is right now. I think it's been closed, haven't it? Yep. I yeah. just opened it back. Okay. Yeah. No. And that's uh, if. So I, I'll, I'll make that motion. I'm gonna I'm gonna request that we lay this over for two weeks so that we can work on some language to cover. And I assume all the other components of this we can, can wait. We this first came up to us about a year or so ago, and, and we've asked for it to to go back to to modify and look at some other things, including drones and. So I think two weeks is, was, it would not be uh, harmful to, to the resolution we're, we're considering here. But um, so I, I, I'm, I'm not committing to it, but I'm open to looking at what language we might be able to come up with to address um, maybe the ability for, for those hours other than 11 or 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. And I'll second, I'll second the motion for a layover for two weeks. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Ms. Johnson. Aye. Did you have remarks? Um, I do have some remarks. Um, I would like for you to share our conversation earlier today on doing our briefing where I mentioned the concern I had um, regarding the uptick of violence in District 2 and, um, and share with this group um, your uh, information in terms of in comparisons with other uh, areas, other cities like ours in terms of not having enough data or things of that nature? Uh, I'm sorry, in, in regards to uh, just how much information is out there about the trail function being positive or negative, whether it's 24 hours or not? Correct. Okay. Yeah, at, at this point, we don't have anything in hand. We would That would be part of our list of items to review about how that has benefited or been a detriment to uh, crime or uh, interaction with needing police support uh, on if the opening of trails for that additional six hours that is being proposed is a positive or if the data is a negative. So that's not something we have in hand at this point but would be part of our review process. And so um, with the uptick in um, crime um, in District 2, that's a real concern not having that information for me. Um, and having the park open or having the bike trail open um, the extended hours. So yeah, I would need additional information in order to make a very informed decision. Understand, absolutely. Okay. So I think uh, I, I like motion to lay over. I think uh, I'll say two weeks. With, uh, if you, uh, you forgive me, 
Councilman, the, with the expectation that we would have adjusted the language and a recommendation at that time? Yeah, that we would, yes. And the second on that too? Is it yes. just for two weeks? Yes. Ms. Johnson, are your remarks concluded? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Palermo. Thank you, Mr. President and uh, Director. Just a couple comments yes. as well. Uh, I appreciate the layover because it possibly saves me from voting against this. Um, and it's because of item number one. I haven't heard anything about the changes uh, from two through 19, uh, but I've heard a lot about item number one. And it is it revolves around transportation. Uh, I think earlier you had made a comment that we already have uh, the trails closed from 11 to 5. Uh, but we also are always looking for different avenues to uh, make transportation better, just like scooters. We didn't have them two years ago. Uh, we got a lot of feedback negative against the scooters because of where they would be left or uh, how they would interrupt uh, people walking. Uh, but it was another form of transportation that eventually we approved. Uh, and this is no different. Um, I had asked you in pre-council about, did you do a study? And the answer was no. You said there was a survey done. I wasn't asking you to do a study. What I was hoping is you said, yes, Councilman Palermo, we sat somebody down in Elmwood in between the college and Exarbon, and we watched these trails from 11 to 5. And we seen X amount of walkers, people on bikes, whatever it was. Because whoever's using these trails between them hours, they're, they're not on the street. And any number you would have given me would have uh, helped me to make this decision to uh, not approve this for uh, them park closing hours, even if it was one person that was on that trail, on a bike, or walking. Um, so it's something we definitely need to look at. I really appreciate the layover. It's going to help to get some questions answered. Now let me ask you, um, in between the annual review, how would you change something on here, add something on here for the park rules? And I'll, and I'll ask you more specifically, because I've been asking about an MOU for parks in regards to fields, because there's some field stuff on here. Um, there's one about no charging for parking at, uh, let, me, let me tell you exactly, because we are on the public record and I'd love to hear your answer. Um, Well, there's one about parking, you can't charge for parking, uh, no bounce houses, obviously no alcohol. But before you were uh, given the job, I had asked the previous parks director for clarification on MOUs for fields that other entities have, that we have. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, and so do some of my colleagues. And I was told, well, we're hiring a new director, and let's wait till the director gets seated. So you got hired, and I asked the same question. Where are we at on these MOUs with the fields? Uh, and then I was told, well, we're hiring a person below me. Let's wait for that person to get hired. Because this really happens when we get questions and concerns from our constituents. We ask and ask and ask, and these are what we are told. And I was told, well, wait till we hire this person. Well, the person's still hired, and the question I have about the MOUs isn't 1 through 19 on here. And it's about the fact that we have fields that people have MOUs on that in another elected body has control over. And I'll give you the example for those who are not following along. <clears throat> During the pandemic, uh, fields that OPS have the MOU with the city with. If OPS closes school, OPS closes them fields. And you ask, why is that a big deal? Well, it is because I had kids in my district that were part of nonprofits that weren't allowed to use these fields because another entity, another elected body chose to close these fields. So I had kids, kids in my neighborhood looking to stay busy that weren't able to use the fields because of another elected body. And I'm bringing this up on the public record because I have asked you, I've asked the mayor, I've asked everybody else, where are we at? And then I see these changes and I hear about your staff and all the good work you did and I appreciate it, but it's not on here. So let's work on that in the next two weeks. Thank you. 
I'm, I'm happy to address a couple oh, yeah, of the things sure, you mentioned, uh, yeah, Council Member. Sorry. Um, so uh, first and foremost, responding to things in motion, again, committed to doing a review annually, but should something come up of major significance, we wouldn't necessarily present all of the rules back to you, but a potential specific rule adjustment for consideration that was timely and helpful in terms of doing that kind of mid-year, if you want to put it in those terms, so we'd be absolutely uh, happy to do that as needed. And, and we certainly don't want to uh, nickel and dime the council in terms of rule modifications and thus our commitment to trying to do that annually, but should something be of a significant enough magnitude, we would bring that to you to address midway. Uh, as far as the MOU, we have put out a direct call to the school district. You bring them up in particular about the fact that there's a need to reset that appropriately so that we do have the ability to stay nimble and pivot on things like we just experienced this year to gain access back to those fields for function by the city and providing to the people who are looking for those because we are in a need and a position to do that. And we are reviewing our entire distribution of field process in which there will be some more flexibility for us to say, should it not be used, Here's the time frame that the city would then get it back and the responsibility being shifted back to the city. And again, more of that fluidity in terms of who can care for what and an identification of whose responsibility happens when, start, stop, and so on. And that's more of what I'll keep you posted about in the next several weeks because it is something that's a priority for us. Yeah, with all due respect, Director, I'm not looking for you to get back to me. Okay. I'm looking for you to change the MOU and add another line like we're talking about doing for number one. Yeah. That says at the bottom, the sign that's at the park that says parks and rec property regardless of how it's spelled we have authority over that field absolutely are we following each other absolutely I, I don't need you to get back to me i need you to fix the mous thank you thank you thank you mr bagley you're recognized thank you mr president um in pre-council we talked about this this morning it's not a question but i just wanted to state that i want to support councilman harding's motion to lay this over for the fact of public safety there's a lot of parts of this and and i think we got to really weigh all those options at least i want to and i i appreciate the the two weeks to lay that over to get more information and talk to some more folks that use that trail and it was mentioned earlier the people that live along that trail um you know is that an issue with them if this is open from 11 p.m to 5 a.m um is that going to be an issue for the police and public safety and those kind of things. So I, I at, least, at least I'm looking forward to the two weeks to, to get more information on that is new to the council. I know this has been discussed before, but I'm getting up to speed on it, but that two weeks will help me get even more to where I need to be. So thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. And I'll also support the layover today. Um, I, I do want to say, though, that um, th this has been a bit lost into the conversation today, that I do appreciate the work that's been done to date. Uh, which uh, started prior to your arrival and, and that you're um, seeking to complete here. Um, and one of the most important things was that we are now expressly allowing e-bikes and scooters on our trails, and I think that's perfectly appropriate. And we have taken the approach in this draft um, that there are speed recommendations uh, for all those involved to keep everyone safe, which I also think is a much better approach than what we, were, we had previously. So we're making good progress on that. And I will say maybe this is a point of personal privilege too that um, also in here it reaffirms that folks that are riding bikes should announce themselves when they're passing pedestrians on their trails for everyone's safety and that's true but as someone who has ridden their bike uh, every day this week on our trails I would also note the frustration that I saw in one person's uh, letter to the editor recently which is many walkers are, aren't paying attention either and they have their earbuds in and they can't even hear people that are passing folks. So I would just maybe encourage everyone to be communicative while they're on our trails and using our park facilities so uh, we can communicate and keep everyone safe and, and have a lot of joint uses or multi-uses on our trail system, which is what we want. Um, a couple other comments just for now. Um, Councilman Palermo started, I think, describing item number 19, which uh, discusses parking. And there is one point of, um, uh, of one point in here that is important and that is expressly new uh, that is important to my folks in Keystone, but I'm sure it happens many other places too, which is you can't park your, your, your car on our parks and in the grass. Uh, that, is, that is happening with um, more frequency. Um, certainly folks can deliver things if they're grilling out or doing what they need to do to drop things off. Uh, but you can't leave your car parked in a, in a park on the grass. Um, having this language in here now expressly allows that to be a uh, ticketed offense. Uh, 
if they aren't paying attention to the rules and aren't uh, um, paying attention to the guidance and the suggestions not to do that from their neighbors. Uh, so that's an important addition as well. And then lastly, I just say um, I do support the park closing times. That's no different than we have right now. Um, and that is important to lots of parks in my district and I'm sure throughout um, the city. And there are many residents who would uh, encourage that to stay in place for the, some of the issues we do find in our parks late at night. But I certainly wouldn't see the harm in having one more exception there as it relates to our trails uh, that are being used for transportation purposes. Um, I think Councilman Harding's right. You don't want to try and amend that on the fly just because there are a lot of things to consider and, and how that is worded. Um, and to your point, um, Director, you want to make sure it's worded in a way that it wouldn't risk any funding, potential funding, um, one way or another. So I think the, uh, the layover is appropriate to get that hammered out, but I don't see that being overly difficult or overly complex to do uh, two weeks from now. So with that, um, I know it's been a long road for you trying to get these uh, in place and updated, which we appreciate. I think two more weeks wouldn't hurt either. There's a motion and a second to delay for two weeks. Roll call. Johnson. Aye. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item 46, an ordinance to approve a purchase order to Avoqua Water Technologies, LLC, and the annual amount of $66,240 to purchase a hydrogen peroxide chemical supply for the Missouri River Water Resource Recovery Facility. Public hearing on number 46 is today. Are there any proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 47, in ordinance to approve the Mastercraft Building Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Agreement. Public hearing on number 47 is today. Proponents. Oh uh, yeah, Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning, and I'm here for any questions you may have. Thank you. Any other proponents on 47 today? Good afternoon, Kendra Ringenberg, 1318 North 187th Street. I'm just here to answer any questions on behalf of the applicant. Thank you. Any other proponents on 47? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing's closed. Oh, Larry, uh, come on down. Larry Storr, 5015 Lafayette, 68132. I'm opposed to this because I'm not quite clear uh, why we should be doing this with a private, uh, uh, looks like a private corporation, an LLC. For, public, for privately owned public green space, and it's fairly close to uh, the Jean Leahy Mall that we're already spending a lot of money, so I don't understand why the city uh, needs to do this, but it doesn't say city participation. This is another one of those TIF things that's not clear. Why is the city not participating in this one? It participated in most of the others. Maybe it's just a typo, I don't know. But I think the citizens really ought to know because why are why are we contributing some tax dollars to a, a private LLC and for private green space? I just can't comprehend uh, how many older people are going to stay in Omaha when the taxes are getting too high. Yes, that's a that's a county thing, but the city is within the county, is it not? And because of that. It shifts over to the county, and then the county says, oh, well, we don't raise your taxes. The, the other bodies do with their levies. So it's kind of like that shell game. But, you know, it, it doesn't have to be if you just explain it clearly in plain language so citizens can understand it. Maybe the World Herald and our community colonists can do that. Now, I do want to add something to this to this and TIF is in my, my complaint. But Mr. Ramirez, uh, he is, yes, a blogger, but he is also a kind of a community columnist. He is associated with noise and maybe a couple of other organizations. Yes, he's a citizen, he can come to the podium, but I think he ought to disclose when he does that he's probably writing an article about it. Contributing to an article, but not necessarily putting his name on it. 
Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other opponents on number 47? Public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 48, an ordinance to approve the 18 Howard Tax and Commit Financing Redevelopment Agreement. <coughs> Public hearing on number 48 is today. Proponents. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Don Seaton, Omaha City Planning. And again, I'm here for any questions you may have on this agreement. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Seeing none, public hearings closed. Non-action items, items 50 through 64 do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on agenda for consideration. Second, roll call. Johnson. Aye. Mel Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Harding. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Meeting is adjourned at 340.